Hey, welcome back to Trial and Error. So where we last left off on this abortion of a project, um, found that we couldn't wire in series 224 volt alternators, and we would somehow need to rethink everything. Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here. First step, uh, I think my, the easiest choice here is gonna be to leave the bridge rectifier in place that we already have and attempt to alter the DC voltage going to the rotor itself. Uh, but we first need to understand what is going on with what they have set up here and how they're regulating it. I don't know at all how they're doing it, but we're gonna attempt to find out, bypass that, probably go with an external connection for the DC to feed into this and see if that works. You wouldn't think these would be that well torqued on, but they sure are. Jesus. Now we get a much better view of the bridge rectifier and then the DC little bus set up here. So let's pull that DC piece out. So I think that might be how they're doing it right there. So they have a little, I believe this is a little rectifier because that's also piggybacked off those terminals and that is feeding information back into this guy, which I'm betting is a positive 12 volt signal. No, because that would need a ground. Oh, it's getting its ground. Hmm, well, maybe not. Nope, that's its ground. So yeah, I bet you that's a little rectifier so if we just pop that out and we run 12 volts or variable voltage actually i can pull it right off of this to that stud i bet you we can adjust the voltage of this thing uh, confusion continues so i just spent I just spent the past few minutes searching for a replacement 48 volt regulator. Um, so this is an AC Delco style, I guess, uh, based on what I can find. And there really isn't any 48 volt regulators available. So we're gonna have to make our own. Okay, so I got the positive brush and I guess what we really need to do is connect some wiring here that does not relate to this wiring. So our continuity checked out. Um, we've got a positive ground for the top terminal and the second terminal goes just out to this wire here. We've soldered in our little diode, uh, you know, tip, removed it from the regulator on board, just looping that right out. So let's drop the coil back in it. That will heat shrink up where it goes into the alternator and actually I'm going to double sleeve that area where it could rub. Yeah, that's pretty clean, honestly. So there we go. Uh, in theory, this will work. Reality, unfortunately, is usually very different for me, but we'll give it a shot. Yee, so, with it completely connected to that diode, bypassing the regulator, at this RPM we're getting 55 volts.
So, that, I think, is gonna do something. I think. So I'm still gonna wanna put a rheostat between these two so I can dial it in, because essentially, that is running this thing full bore, and that may cause some additional heat to build up that isn't ideal. So I'm probably gonna end up doing something with that, uh, with a rheostat. But this proved that we can take a 24 volt alternator and pump up to as much as 70 volts DC. And now we can control it just by how much resistance we put in this line, which is how much uh, current or voltage and current, I guess both, is feeding that winding on the armature itself, on the rotor. I hooked it up, boosting this up to 70 volts at the output. And the problem I ran into there was current. So I could only get maybe, I think seven or eight amps at the peak of output by pushing it through the internal regulator at 48 volts. So what I think is happening there is I'm losing efficiency because, because the coil is really only built for 24 volts. So we're gonna go back to my original idea of running these in series. And the way we're gonna make that actually work is, well, we're taking out the regulator. In fact, took out basically everything here. We're gonna leave the brushes in there, but we're gonna wire them off individual leads. So I can control them completely independent from the chassis. So this will not be a grounded case anymore. Um, we're just gonna apply field voltage directly to the armature there. We're gonna take our three AC lines and we're gonna run those out as well into a separate uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, because these are going to be doing constant duty, I upgraded the bridge rectifier to a much more substantial unit. So this will give us our three AC inputs, our two DC outputs. And then I also picked up a couple of displays that will give me voltage output and amperage so that we can monitor what's coming out of both of these alternators. And I think that'll work, but we'll put that in last. We got to get this thing to work first before we put any effort into making it work neat. I'm gonna fast forward you guys a little bit here um, because sometimes you just gotta put down the friggin' video camera and figure it out. And that's exactly what I ended up doing here. So here's what we've got going on. And by the way, this is now working. I tapped off from the built-in regulator and kind of uh, sharing the output of that to feed back into this first alternator. So these guys get tied together. We already saw the wiring off of the AC fields into our new 100 amp um, bridge rectifier. That bridge rectifier now has the negative coming from the batteries, going through a breaker between the two, kind of ends up being an on off switch actually. And we go in series between the two alternators. So since the only thing shared here is the DC side that activates the coils, we can now, and we have a, a separate rectifier, we can now run these guys in series and they don't, doesn't cause any problems, basically. So, got it up and running and it's working beautiful. So my belt tensioning system was fine up until I started really putting a load on it. So once both of these guys started ripping, we needed a belt tensioning system. So there's a slot cut in this and I can adjust this alternator up and down to tension it. There's also a brace on that center pulley to keep that from wanting to turn under the belt tension. And that is working out really well too. So the back that kind of started off with a good plan and then turned quickly into a meat hook abortion has actually come out okay. So 
Everything is set up the complete different way from what I had planned, but that's fine. <laughs> it's working. Uh, and really, it could have been a little bit simpler, but I had already modified this one in the regulator so much that it just made more sense to have this regulator also feed this uh, alternator and they, they're shared and they balance together, which is fine. The external bridge rectifier was the key, so getting these two to operate on separate grounds. If I had it to do over again, I would get two alternators that were not one single wire hookups and just had the feeds coming out and we could do the work on the outside. That would make it a lot easier because you wouldn't have to modify the inside of the alternator. But at the end of the day, um, you know, this guy cost me like another 10 bucks or 15 bucks. These are really cheap for uh, these rectifiers. Uh, so it didn't really cost me anything but time and as usual I end up learning a lot more about what I'm <laughs> Trying to build through the process of failing. So that's kind of how that worked out. This is the final rendition So I ended up picking up a little bit longer belt so I could go back and do the original planned belt routing But I also found that I needed to add something for a tensioner on the outside just to absorb the normal vibrations in a belt drive. So I just slapped this in there, little homemade belt tensioner that is doing the trick there. And now we're having no belt issues under full load. Only other thing I gotta do is get a probably a smaller pulley. These alternators do like to turn a little slower. So uh, I'm gonna swap that out and get a little bit more amperage out of it. Wired up a uh, new cable to connect everything together and put in one of those Anderson, little mini Anderson connectors so I can easily connect or disconnect this whenever I need to charge. And uh, the wires are just hanging right now off the wall, but all of that obviously is gonna get tied in with the rest of it. So as always, thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody have a great day.